Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing and ranking four gadgets under 20 bucks, supposedly useful, supposedly make your life easier. Let's see if they really work in today's video. Let's get started with the click and carry. This was on Shark Tank. There's nothing really to unbox on this one, but I did pay $12.99 plus $3.99 shipping from the, direct from the official website. I believe it's also available on Amazon. The claims are that it's designed to equalize weight distribution while carrying bags and items with handles. It includes padding to help protect your shoulders or hands. They say it's great for grocery bags, cans, dry cleaning, and more. It holds up to about 80 pounds. It was featured on Shark Tank and QVC. All you have to do is twist, hang, and click. Reviews seem pretty good for this one, so I put it to the test, and here's how that went. All right, field test with the click and carry with some groceries. Let's check it out. That's all you have to, all I do is just push it down like this, turn, and we can just load it up. You're supposed to make it kind of even on each side, so I'll, I'll alternate where I put them on there. See me, I can fit in one click and carry. Oh, that's heavy. That's, that's a lot of heavy stuff. All right, kind of over, overloaded this thing. All right, so it's kind of, it's pretty comfortable on the hand. They say you can actually put it over your shoulder. Let's see. Oh, wow, it actually, I can have my, I, my hands are free. This, I'm gonna go inside like this. I have my hands free to do, I don't know what I'd do with them, but my hands are free at least. Or we could go old school and just carry it like this. I actually kind of like the shoulder better. Ah, right, here we go. All right, I gotta say, I, I'm kind of happy with this. I got more tests to do, but my first impression is pretty good. So I've been using something similar to this for a couple of years now. You might recall this from a video from 2019. So the click and carry has a similar function, but the only problem with this is that, well, there's two problems with this, is that number one, you can't go over your shoulder, and number two, all the weight seems to go to one side or the other, which the click and carry seems to have solved because it allows you to put it on each side. When you use this one, as much as I like it, it tends to off, always go to one side or the other. So I think the click and carry first impression seems to be an upgrade over this type of bag clip. But before I get ahead of myself, let's try a few more things. I was recently cleaning out the storage area in my garage and I ran across some very old paint. I, I can't believe I still have it, but I, I, I put it aside because I knew I was gonna be testing out the click and carry. I thought it might be a good chance to test this out, carrying a couple of not completely full, but still pretty heavy paint cans. They show a person carrying two in each in each one of these. Let's try it out. All right, here we are. A couple of very old cans of paint, but they're still pretty heavy. There's still quite a bit in there. I'm sure it's all dried up now, but let's see what we got. They showed one on each side. Oh yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. I don't know why some cans of paint have such uncomfortable handles. So this definitely helps. It feels pretty sturdy too. I guess you could take this down to the paint store with yourself and carry it out like that. Pretty good. All right, so when I saw it on Shark Tank, I knew I had to try this one because I've been using something for years that is pretty similar. So I didn't really expect much from it, but actually I'm kind of surprised at how well it works. It seems to have taken a rather traditional design, made some improvements and made what I think is a better carrying clip. So I think the Click and Carry is a good product. Next up it is the Bread Buddy. Now it just kind of looks like an ordinary bread container, but I guess it kind of isn't. I paid $17.34 for this, which seems a little bit steep for just a, basically a plastic container, but they do say it has three uses. Number one, it is a container that keeps your bread fresh longer. It also protects it from getting squished and it works as a dispenser, which we'll get into in a moment. There's not a lot to it. I should point out, there are some holes in the bottom here, which some people on Amazon had complaints about, which is funny because it's part of the design. Otherwise, in some cases there'd be a vacuum form, you wouldn't be able to get the bread out. So it kind of has to be there. It also occurred to me that this is, allows you to store your bread vertically, which is kind of different. It can be handy for cupboards that have a kind of tight space in them. But let me try a couple of loaves and see how it works. Try some Sara Lee uh, wheat bread. Let's see how that just, let's just see how it fits in there first. All right, well, it does fit. Oh, it kind of like st stopped most of the way down. 
All right, it's a pretty tight squeeze, but it does fit. There's some classic wonder sandwich bread. This is a very large loaf and it fits all the way in there. Very nice. While it's in there, let's just go with the wonder bread and see how it goes. All right, so yeah, take the bread tie off. And then what we're supposed to do is fold the packaging on the outside of the bread buddy like this. So that is how we're gonna dispense it. All right, put the lid on there. All right, so just for normal storage, this is what we've got. The bread is inside and some of the wrapping is on the outside. Feels pretty sturdy. Feels pretty sturdy. All right, I would say it's sturdy. Now let's say I want some bread out of here. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. And then you can, if you have it too high, you just push it back in. I mean, it's a simple design, but it seems to kind of work. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simulate it use an entire loaf. I'm gonna take two slices out, put the lid on, take the lid off, take two more slices out and see how the process goes. I'm kind of curious what happens when you get down to the bottom, if it's still gonna be efficient with that. Let's see. All right, so taking two slices out. Lid back on. Dispense two more slices. This might take a minute, so we might have to speed things up just a little bit. So let's cut to the fast motion while I'm doing this test. Cut the fast motion. I'm down to the very bottom here. Couple of observations. Number one, the, the packaging gets very long at this point. You kind of have to crumple it up or it starts getting kind of unmanageable. Um, number two, it seems like when you get kind of low, it's harder to push it back down if you go too far up. Not too bad, but something I noticed. But otherwise, it's working pretty flawlessly. It's, uh, it's whoops. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, it worked exactly as, as I expected it to. There was no surprises, nothing went wrong. Uh, it seems like it's pretty good. I wonder if I can put this bread back in here now. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, it worked, it worked. I've got to say, just from a, an initial test, uh, this seemed to work exactly as I thought it would. It worked flawlessly. Let me do one more quick durability test outside and then move on to the next item. How about a bread buddy drop test? Bailey expect it? All right. Bailey says it's okay. Bailey's impressed. Bailey's very impressed by that. All right, so as far as a bread buddy goes, it's one of those things you see, you probably think, I don't really need something like that. But its ability to make the bread more stackable, it protects it, keeps it fresh, and dispenses it, I think a lot of people are gonna find the bread buddy to be pretty useful. Next up, this is not an ordinary pair of scissors. These are laser scissors. It sounds like something Dr. Evil would have invented, but actually this is on Amazon. Let's first take a look back at the unboxing and see how that went. Quickly open up these laser scissors. It says as seen on TV. I don't remember seeing it on advertising television, but it's got one of these hor horrifying packages. Luckily I've got my slit it, which can open it up. And here it is. Looks like a standard pair of scissors with uh, a little bit extra going on here. Reading over these uh, instructions here. Looks like we have to pull this out to get the uh, battery activated. All right, just pulled this out. We got a button here that I think this activates the laser. And there it is. Interesting. Very interesting. Will that be good for cutting? I, I, I don't know. It's going to be weird because your hands are moving the laser. So as you move around, the laser is going to change. Supposedly, you can also adjust the laser with these screws right here. So I, it looks like it's pretty straight from what I can tell. Now I paid $10.98 for these. Um, it looks like a, just a household pair of scissors with a laser attached to it. They say it's good for fabric, cutting paper, and more. Reviews are pretty bad for this, to be honest, actually. Uh, a few people seem to like them, so I'm gonna see if I can make the best of what it is. So the way this is supposed to work is you're supposed to make a mark or maybe make a slit on one side, and then you're supposed to turn on the laser and just basically line it up with that slit or mark while you're cutting. Ideally, it'll give you a nice straight cut. So let's see how that goes. Sounds easy enough, but the reviews were not very good for this. Let's see if I can get it to work. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a slit on this side. That's gonna be where I'm gonna try to go to. Let's see. Now hit the, uh, hit the laser button. Laser is engaged. Not very bright, but let's see. So now what I wanna do is line up the laser with the slit on the other side, which is what I'm kinda doing here. 
And I'm just gonna keep cutting while I line that up. Oh wow, the laser moves every time I even move the scissors at all. I, I guess I'm doing it. I mean, it's really hard to keep that laser kind of straight. The closer I get to the, sli the slit, I actually have to tilt the scissors more and more. Uh, it's, getting, it's getting more and more awkward as I go. The laser is completely off the page now. I can't even get to it. Ugh. Well, I almost feel worn out cutting that one line. Let me just say, is it straight? I guess it's, I guess it's kind of straight-ish. I'm noticing that it kind of goes, uh, it bows a little bit in the center there. I kind of went at a slight angle. Uh, I don't know. Let me, let me try something. Let me just keep trying. Let me keep trying here. Right, I'm going to try another test here. I think what I'm going to do is take a piece of cardboard. I'm going to draw a line lightly on one side and I'm going to cut on the other and see how close my cutting is with the line on the other side. Let's try it out. All right, just to kind of draw a random line right down the center here. All right, so I've got a marking here and I've got a marking here. And this is the exact same spot where the line is on the other side. So if I'm off, we'll know. All right, so here's my mark. This is my landing spot. This is where I hope to aim for when I'm cutting. Oh man, this laser, whenever you move it, the laser moves around. How are you supposed to fall a laser when it moves every time you, you move the scissors? Once I get about this far, I, I, my laser's off the table. I can't even, I can't even see it on the cardboard anymore. I have to just kind of guess. All right, turn it over. Let's look at our line here. Oh, look at this hack job. It's like I got off and then I'm off the line for quite a while. And then I kind of start easing back toward it. So far, I'm pretty underwhelmed by these laser scissors. Let me try one more time. This wrapping paper has lines on the back side. I'm just gonna cut a straight line across the front and see how straight it is. I'm gonna aim for that snowflake right there. I honestly feel like I could do it about as well without a laser at all. All right, here's the final product of the wrapping paper. As you can see, not very impressive. It's not straight. It's kind of jagged. I could have probably done just as well on my own, even without the lines. I don't think I need to test these anymore. These are just not very good. I should have known from the bad reviews this is going to be a bust. I mean, I like the idea, but every time you're moving your hand, the laser's moving around. That's not a nice idea, but they need to go back to the drawing board in this one. I'm just wondering if some practice will make me better at this. Let me try a bunch of paper and see what happens. All right, time out, that's it, I give up. I, I, you can't make a straight line with these scissors. There's a couple reasons why. First of all, not only are you moving your scissors left to right this way, but you're also moving it left to right this way. Either one of those will affect how the laser points. It's a good idea, but I just think this is an utter failure. So they're actually a pretty good pair of scissors, but the laser adds absolutely nothing of value to it. And finally, it's this multi-function car gadget. This is under 20 bucks. It has probably the most ratings I've ever seen for any product on Amazon, over 100,000 ratings. It's also Amazon's choice and number one in this category. Its primary function is that of a Bluetooth FM transmitter, but it has multiple functions as well. So let's take a look back at my review and see how that went. So the gadget's main function is that of an FM Bluetooth wireless transmitter. So your phone transmits to this device, it transmits to an open FM station, and you can listen to music in your car. Even though a lot of newer cars have Bluetooth, some cars, like the one I'm sitting in now, its Bluetooth doesn't work very well. It's been the bane of my existence for the last couple of years, so maybe something like this will work for me. But there's other functions as well. It allows for hands-free calling with a built-in microphone. It has a USB port for your device to charge. It has an auxiliary port so you can plug directly into it if you have an old school MP3 player. It even has an SD card port so you can put your music directly on there. So let's first take a look back at the unboxing and see how that went. Here we go, the KM18 FM transmitter with this ridiculous amount of reviews on Amazon, over 100,000 ratings. Okay, user manual, I'll go through that pretty carefully. Auxiliary cable. 
Here's the unit itself. It looks a little bit smaller in person than I expected. Not too bad though. They say this all in one button can be used to answer or reject hang up phone calls and switch between calls and music. These two buttons appear to be your channel select and these two appear to be your forward and back for music. 1.44 inch screen for display information. Gooseneck design for easy adjustment. All right, so the first thing you have to do is pair it with your phone. So I wanna make sure this worked before I even took the time to review it. I plugged in last night, it showed up on my phone's Bluetooth options. I tapped it, it was paired, very simple. I also noticed this morning that it automatically paired with my phone now that it's been set up. So, so whenever I get in my car now, it automatically pairs up with it. The real trick to this is that you really have to find an empty FM station in your area. And, and here in Las Vegas, that's kind of hard. It seems like every other station has something broadcasting or it's picking up a signal from a nearby station. So it's, it's a bit difficult. I actually went through every single FM station last night and tried to find the quietest one. The quietest one I could find is 89.1 FM. You'll probably have to play with it because your area will be different. And as you're driving around, that could change too. So that's something to consider. But let me plug it in and show you how it works. Now the first thing you have to do is find an open 12 volt port. So I got one there and I've got one way back there. And I have one in the back seat which obviously I can't get to. So I'm gonna, I think this will be the most convenient for this review to show you how it works here. All right, so when I put my 89.1 on, it's, it's kind of staticky. Plug this in here. Waiting for Perry. Paired. All right, so it did pair very quickly. That's nice. It shows that we're on 89.1 FM, Bluetooth, and that has my phone name on it. And it is currently paused. So what's kind of interesting is that as soon as I paired it, the FM station got quiet as it's about picking up a signal. Now, if I turn up the, the station all the way, you can hear some static in there. Do hear static. And that static you will hear if you play your music loud enough. I think if you're driving around, you're not gonna really notice the static, but if you're sitting still and you have it loud, you might notice the static. Now I have to be careful, I got to play non-copyrighted music on here. So I'm gonna play something from Epidemic Sound. It's actually a song from Epidemic Sound via Spotify. All right, here we go. A song on Spotify that I shouldn't have to worry about copyright because it's on also on Epidemic Sound. But it sounds pretty good. If I turn it up really loud, you'll hear a little bit of static in the background. Now you can play anything from your phone. It can be anything that your phone has audio. I'm gonna maybe try a YouTube video. But let me try putting a, an SD card in here. I, have, I put some music on this SD card. Again, not copyrighted. But let me, uh, let me put it on there and, and show you how that works. The SD card goes right in the side here. And as soon as you put it in there, it seems like it starts playing. As soon as I put it in there, it starts playing. But what's nice is that it does pick up from the last time you played. It doesn't start from the beginning every time. So it seems like the SD card is a bit clunky. Like right now, like this is supposed to be playing. It's not um, just the volume. By the way, you can just the volume this this way. And it just it's just not playing. If I skip tracks, it's still not playing. It seems like once it stops, once it decides it doesn't want to play anymore, it just stops playing. The only way I can really fix this is by holding this down and it switches over to my phone. And then I hold it down and switch over back to the uh, the card again. And now it goes. Now it's playing. There we go. And then it stopped playing. Well, this button here, will, if you hold it down once, it will actually repeat all. And then if you hold it down again, it goes to random. Holding down the right button will switch between your phone and the SD card. All right, in this next section, I actually did not even explain what I was doing, so I'll explain it right now. What I wanted to do was test out the quality of the hands-free calling of the FM transmitter versus how a phone sounds. So I made a phone call between two iPhones. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll hear the speaker of the receiving end of the, of the phone call. On the right-hand side, I'll be trying out the FM transmitter, the iPhone in speaker mode, the iPhone in handset mode to compare how they all sound. So here's what happened there. All right, there's a phone call established between this phone and the phone inside my house. Okay, right now I'm speaking through the FM transmitter. Let's see how the sounds. Hopefully it sounds good. I don't know. We shall see. I'm not like I know it's going inside. I've got the iPhone speaker on. I'm going to put it about the same distance away. All right, it's the same distance away from me as the FM transmitter. How does that sound? Hopefully it sounds better. We shall see. Now I've got the iPhone handset going. I'm not sure how that's going to sound, but hopefully it sounds, uh, I assume it's going to sound better than the two speakers are. So one more time, here's the iPhone handset. How does that sound? And then this is the iPhone speaker. How does that sound? Hopefully it sounds good. And finally, this is the FM transmitter. Let's see how that sounds. To end the call, you should be able to just press this button right here. Let's see. 
Does it end the call? Oh, it did. It did work. All right, I should point out in that last clip, if all three of those kind of sounded the same, that's because they do. I actually made a few phone calls off camera and the person on the other end said that really all three configurations sounded about the same. The handset was about the loudest, the FM transmitter was kind of the middle, and the iPhone speaker was at the bottom. So really the FM transmitter's microphone's pretty good. So really the only problem I had with this was the SD card. I didn't have a lot of luck with that one. Everything else worked well. I think there's a lot of functions here that make it valuable to a lot of people. I think 20 bucks is actually quite reasonable for this, so I think this is actually a pretty good product. So let me recap and rank these four gadgets, shall we? Number four clearly is the laser scissors. They don't really work. They're not very useful. They're not very well conceived. I like the idea, but that's not the way to do it. I think of the, of the four of these products, this is the one that I would definitely not recommend. Number three I'm going to say is the FM car transmitter. I do think that that is a quite useful product. It's not something that everybody needs, but if you do need something like that, that would probably be my go-to item. The only thing I had the problem with was the SD card, but everything else worked quite well. I think it's actually a good product. Number two, I'm gonna go with the Bread Buddy. It's one of those things that you don't really think you're gonna need, but once you have it, you're glad you do. It keeps your bread fresh, it keeps it protected, it dispenses it, I think it's actually a good idea. And that leaves me with number one. To me, the Click and Carry is the best of these four. It's a really good product that was on Shark Tank. It takes a traditional idea, makes it a little better. It allows you to carry things on your shoulder. You can carry things in your hands easier. I just think it's a really good idea. So that's all I've got for this video. If you've tried any of these, tell me what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for more videos like this. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.